When it comes to sourcing socially responsible products, there's a great trickle-down effect in terms of the various groups of people that benefit from sourcing in this way. Most obviously, the people who make the products benefit because they receive income and they take that home. The first trickle-down effect is their families because they're in communities where there's very little work opportunity. And so often the children in these families aren't able to go to school. I think the next trickle-down effect is in the supply chain in these villages because um, when you think about making any product, really individuals of these companies have to source the materials to make them. So whether they're sourcing recycled paper for pens or organic fabrics for lunch bags or t-shirts, that's coming from another business in the community. And so those businesses are working in the same conditions as the producer's business. So the people that work for those businesses are benefiting, their families are benefiting. So it has a sort of a whole local economic impact on the community and the families and the lives of those people. The first way is more traditional in terms of if you want to incorporate the social impact by having a fundraising element with the event or a volunteerism uh, if, you know, activity associated with the event for the people that are attending, uh, that's more of a traditional charity uh, that they would be looking for. And one of the ways that an event planner can evaluate what charities they might want to support is first to look at their own corporate community social investment policies or CSR if they have a corporate social responsibility mandate within the organization. Generally companies might already have identified these are the kinds of organizations that we want to support and may already have alignment. So for example a real estate company supporting housing and shelter causes or a financial company supporting uh, financial literacy and education. If their organization doesn't already have an affiliation um, they can go to charityvillage.com they can search by cause and they can pull a list of uh, charities that match what they're interested in supporting and uh, start to evaluate that. The other way to, um, uh, to incorporate social impact into event is if, if, an organ if a planner wants to um, extend business opportunity to a marginalized people group, so people of diverse backgrounds or people with disabilities or people living in poverty, and they want to be able to include them by ordering some of the things that they need for their event from one of these social businesses. It's a little harder, but actually there's some really good tools out there. Uh, the Social Enterprise Council of Canada actually has a portal, and you can go there, and there's social businesses that are registered on there. So you can look for and find you know, a florist that employs adults with disabilities, or a caterer um, that employs uh, people that are being re rehabilitated from the street, um, or a promotional products company. The next challenge is that they're thinking about it in the context of environmental impact. But increasingly, even the ASTM standards and the industry as a whole is starting to define social responsibility as including environmental and human impact. And so that's sort of the first challenge, to even think about it that way. And then when an organization does decide that they want to go in that direction, um, the biggest challenge for planners at that point is sourcing alternatives. Uh, they're not the obvious options, and so um, you know, two good sources again to go to for solutions to find alternatives for socially responsible suppliers include the Social Enterprise Council of Canada and even Charity Village and even the local United Way is probably aware of social businesses that, uh, that planners could tap into. If planners are looking to select a socially responsible supplier they, they can think about a couple of different things but one point that's really interesting that most planners may not know is that Meeting Professionals International, MPI, has uh, commissioned a study on corporate social responsibility in the UK with Leeds Metropolitan University. And so one place that you can go look is if you go to the MPI website, there's actually a really fun little simple framework around levels of social impact. And they've categorized it under must, should, and can do levels of activity. So uh, must do would be, you probably wouldn't be dealing with a supplier like that anyway because they would go to jail for what they're doing. Uh, should do is standard, supplier code ethics. Can do is really where it gets fun and there's a lot of opportunity to incorporate sizzle or impact into your event by having a very tangible social impact.